Hello everyone, today I'm gonna be talking some more about my Sith Warriors and it's gonna be a mixture of showing you the little edits I did on my Legacy Warrior and talking about some of my choices, also answering some of your questions that have risen in the past week or so. I wanna start by saying that the characters are above all this, characters, so the choices they make are driven mostly by who they are and not by the fact that the choices are light or dark. Um, I'm saying this because some of you have been wondering about my dark side choices on the on Sidonia and my light side choices. Actually, I think it was only one on uh, Cormalis. That is because I thought these choices would make sense for who the, the warriors are. And that goes especially for Cormalis because even though he's not part of any other character's story, at least not yet, he's still a character. He's not a, a dark side choice machine, essentially. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the choices. Now, I want to start from, from the very beginning. The very first scene you actually see in the game. Uh, it is the scene where the Sith Warrior lands off the shuttle and uh, looks back at the soldier and then the soldier bows at him or her and walks away. I guess that's my own interpretation of it, but I imagine that the Sith warrior, when he looks at the soldier, he either says something or looks in a way that demands uh, honor and respect and therefore the warrior, uh, the, the soldier bows. I thought that would not suit Sidonia and who she was, so the first little addition, or I guess removal I did, was to remove that bow from, from the soldier. The next thing is the assassin in the jails. Many of you were wondering why I made this choice to, to kill her instead of recruiting her for the Empire. Basically I thought that recruiting her for the Empire was a far more evil and reckless choice in its nature than killing her. Because let's Let's think about what we know about her. We know that she is an assassin or a, a mercenary, and she didn't know who hired her, and she didn't know who she was hired to kill. I don't know about you, but I thought that was horrible. Uh, and, and she didn't regret doing what she was doing. In other words, she gets paid, and she doesn't care who she kills or who hires her to kill anybody. And I... I thought if some, if such person was to become an imperial assassin, you know, who answers only to the Sith, she had the potential of doing horrible things and killing innocent people without a blink of an eye. So I thought killing her was a better choice overall. It was a hard choice, definitely. Uh, if you if you seen the letter she writes to Poena. You can tell it is hard on her, but that's what she thought was the correct thing to do. Then soon after, when Tremel faced me and asked me about my choices, I removed the part where I had to explain myself about my choice regarding Solens, because none of the three options represented why I really did what I did, so I removed this part as a whole. Moving on, we get to the killing of Tremol part, and uh, if you remember, both of my characters there picked the light side option, that they didn't like the idea of killing Tremor, uh, Tremol. In fact, both characters had different reasons not to like it. Sidonia, she didn't think Tremol was such a bad person. Obviously, he believed strongly in the Sith ways that she didn't really like, but she saw something good in him. He was not a maniac, he was not insane. Uh, he had a daughter that he seemed to care about and she she just didn't want to kill him, you know, kind of like she mentions in her letter to Poena. On the other hand, Cormalus liked the fact that he was supporting him. You know, he generally supports the Sith warrior very much. And he was obviously on his side and suddenly Cormalus was ordered from someone who he didn't know to go ahead and kill him, and so he didn't really like the idea of that. 
However, he didn't feel remorse, he didn't feel so bad after killing him, he just, you know, that wasn't his plan from the beginning. So that's about the killing of Tremel part. Moving on, I did a little edits, a couple of little edits um, on Sidonia's conversations with Barris. They were mostly pieces of lines that I removed, which showed a little more appreciation and admiration towards Barris than I would have liked to have seen. The biggest one was definitely the Sith Code. As you know, Barris asks you about the Sith Code, the, the literal code, and then its meaning in politics and warfare or something. I thought about it and I decided there is no way Poena hadn't at least told the Sith Code to Sidonia. She didn't teach her in these ways, but if you remember, Poena was a, uh, had a big thirst for knowledge and for history, so I'm sure she would have definitely told the Sith Code to Sidonia, if not for anything else, at least for educational purposes. And none of the three options in response to Darth Barriss' question implied that you really know the Sith Code, so I removed this whole part. And finally we get to the part where we are intercepted by Vem Vemrin. And uh, this is probably the biggest edit I did to make um, Sidonia live up to her character. And uh, probably that was also the thing most of you guys noticed. It was the fact that I tried to imply that Sidonia did not actually kill Vemrin. I think that should have been an option. Granted, I don't know what happens in future, maybe the death of Vemrin carries some sort of meaning, and I don't plan on bringing him back, you know, in my personal story, so if he has to be dead in order for the story to continue, then you, know, you can assume he died from something else. But given the message um, Sidonia wrote to Poena, talking about how badly she felt after killing the assassin, and going back to the assassin I spoke about in the beginning, she didn't think that was the wrong choice. Quite the contrary, she thought that was the right choice, and still she hated the fact that she had to kill somebody. And I think she had the opportunity to spare Vemrin and just knock him out. And that's what I wanted it to look like. And I believe that was all. Um, oh, I forgot one last part. It was my uh, last videos, yesterday's videos, of Vet, and again, in Sidonia's video, the part where she uh, removes the collar from Vet's neck, and she says the exact words are, You've earned it, Vet. It is not freedom, though. The thing I did was I removed the it is not freedom, though part. Because, as you may or may not know, Sidonia is a big admirer of her master of Poena, and Poena had a horrible past of slavery, and therefore I think it is very out of character for Sidonia to, in the moment where she removes the shock collar, to emphasize on the lack of freedom part, and that's really it. I have to admit now that I'm reviewing everything, I made quite a few changes, and you know, little bits and pieces, to stay in character. I'm not sure if I'll be able to pull that off in future, um, so I'm kind of... I may get into my own trap, but I hope I'll manage it and I, I'll find a way. So that was it for now, and um, what's coming next is some Playing With You videos. Uh, I have to thank you guys for showing up. Uh, it was a huge improvement from two people last time to, I believe, six or seven people this time, so... Keep up the good work and be good.